Welcome to Item Breakdown, a series where I analyze every single item in Mario Maker 2, go over their properties, and find interesting ways to use them in our own levels. This video is all about the Boomerang Flower. A Boomerang Flower is an item type course part exclusive to the Super Mario 3D World game style. It is a stationary, gravity-affected power-up. If Mario collects a Boomerang Flower, he transforms into Boomerang Mario. He will revert into Super Mario upon taking damage. Boomerang Mario throws a boomerang in the direction he is facing by pressing the Run button. He is unable to throw a boomerang while twirling, long jumping, wearing any of the masks or boxes, while riding in a Koopa Troopa car, or if a boomerang he already threw still exists. A boomerang is thrown in a straight line extending from Boomerang Mario's center. It travels ten and a half tiles in the direction it is thrown. Once it reaches this distance, it will hover in place for a second. After hovering, it then attempts to return to Mario's position. If Mario comes in contact with a boomerang he throws, he will collect it. A boomerang cannot travel upwards. However, if Mario's x-axis position is lower than a boomerang that's attempting to return to him, it is able to travel downwards up to four tiles. A boomerang attempting to return to Mario will travel as many tiles horizontally as it needs to in order to reach its destination. However, once it is on the same y-axis as Mario and is not collected, it will overshoot in the direction it was traveling in by five and a half tiles and hover in place again, repeating the return process. Each time a boomerang changes direction, the travel it overshoots this way is halved from five and a half to two and a half, and finally to one and a half tiles. A boomerang attempting to return to Mario is one of the fastest entities in the game. The only way to outrun it is by riding a Koopa Troopa car on top of dash blocks. Speaking of, a boomerang's lifespan isn't determined by the distance it travels, but rather how many times it's forced to change directions. The fifth time it would change directions, it self-destructs instead. A boomerang that hits a solid object or an enemy that isn't outright defeated will bounce off and immediately attempt to return to Mario. If it hits one of these objects while attempting to return to Mario, and if the direction it would bounce in would not be traveling in Mario's direction, it is destroyed upon collision. It is also destroyed if it collides with a solid object from above while attempting to move downwards. A boomerang is able to collect all kinds of coins, as well as keys. A boomerang is able to activate question mark blocks, block blocks, red pow blocks, blue pow blocks, P switches, on off switches, and exclamation blocks by one unit at a time. It will also destroy empty block blocks. A boomerang will travel through and outright defeat the following enemies you see here on screen, no matter their modifications, unless otherwise specified. A boomerang that hits a bob -omb, Koopa Troopa, or Spiny will not defeat it, but rather ignite the bob -omb and cause the Koopa Troopa or Spiny to retreat into their shell. A boomerang that hits a Bullet Bill or Bonsai Bill will cause them to explode instead of simply defeating them. However, it is still able to travel through them. A boomerang will deal damage and bounce off of a Piranha Creeper, Boom Boom, Pom Pom, and Meowser. A boomerang that hits a bully will bounce off of it and push the bully back a few tiles. A boomerang does not affect the following course parts you see here, either simply bouncing off of them, or just traveling right through them. A boomerang that hits a spike ball will bounce off of it, but cause the spike ball to be flicked upwards into the air a few tiles, begin moving in the opposite direction it was hit from, and begin moving at its default speed. A boomerang that hits a lit bob -omb, shell, or snowball will also cause the objects to be flicked upwards into the air a few tiles, as well as moved horizontally a few tiles opposite the direction it was hit from, and lose all momentum if it had any. A boomerang is able to travel through and destroy the following projectiles you see here. Who knew that boomerangs were super effective against fire? A boomerang that hits the following power-ups will travel through and cause them to be propelled upwards a few tiles. 
Note that this propulsion does not move their x-axis position any. Finally, if a boomerang hits any power-up with wings and or a parachute, the power-up will lose these modifications in addition to being propelled upwards. This now includes the mask and box power-ups. A winged boomerang flower will travel across the screen, rising and falling one tile off of its horizontal axis as it moves. A parachuting boomerang flower will descend slowly toward the bottom of the screen, resuming its basic behavior when it lands. A boomerang flower is able to be placed inside fillable blocks, pipes, and bill blasters. A pipe and bill blaster will release one at a time, only producing another once the first is no longer loaded. A boomerang flower is able to travel through a clear pipe. A boomerang boomerang Mario throws is also able to travel through a clear pipe. Upon entering a clear pipe, a global timer of 7 seconds is started. Once that timer's up, if the boomerang is traveled through a clear pipe or attempts to enter one, it will self-destruct. What's strange is that it doesn't actually matter how much time it spends traveling inside the clear pipe. It could travel through one for a short amount of time, then travel through an entire course length of air. However, immediately upon entering another clear pipe, it will self-destruct. A boomerang flower travels much slower through liquids and is not destroyed by lava. A boomerang thrown by Boomerang Mario is unaffected by water, traveling at the same speed it normally would through air. However, a boomerang is destroyed instantly upon contact with lava. Finally, a boomerang flower is part of a status clear condition, requiring the player to reach the goal as Boomerang Mario. So, now that we know how it works, how do we work with it? The Boomerang Flower, and consequently Boomerang Mario, ricocheted into Mario Maker 2 in patch 3.0, quickly becoming a staple in 3D World courses. Its ability to take out enemies, activate blocks, and knock up objects is unmatched compared to other 3D World power-ups. This versatility makes it a worthy inclusion no matter the kind of level you're making, although there are some caveats to that. I'm getting ahead of myself though, so let's bounce back to the basics. While its gameplay enables a boundless amount of astounding setups, you can't discount this rebounding Wango's traditional background. Unfortunately, one might not realize it when browsing for boomerang-based levels. It's genuinely difficult to find a traditional-oriented course that just happens to feature this creative clapstick, so apologies if the background video here gets a little repetitive. Compared to the Fire Flower, or even the Super Hammer, I'd argue finding one of these in a question mark block is miles more exciting. Instead of spamming fireballs, or slowly swinging a hammer, this sucker can take out tons of enemies at a time, and just makes you feel cool while doing it. Although I would warn that giving this much power to the player might not bode well if your level wasn't laid out properly. By taking out fierce enemies from a distance with such ease, this could potentially stunt any challenge the player would have otherwise had to approach cautiously. On the flip side, if there's an overwhelming amount of enemies meant to be taken out by this power-up and the player had lost it beforehand, this challenge is now going to feel insurmountable. I recommend laying out enemies in such a way that it's still approachable without the boomerang suit, yet not completely nullified by it. This would mean staggering enemies across different planes of elevation or behind terrain, forcing the player to engage them without being able to take them out from afar. Additionally, enemies that also throw projectiles are a perfect match for our Rang Swingin' Plumber, as they can initiate attacks from a distance as well. Aside from enemies, it can also bring some really creative optional collectible setups where the player must time their boomerang toss just right in order to get that sweet, sweet star coin. Or if they happen to bring it past a certain point, they could use it to bust through blocks blocking an alternative pathway. It comes as no surprise that a power-up with this range of abilities would wrangle in such a wide array of puzzle potential. Traveling through clear pipes, activating on-off switches, clearing out certain foes while sparing others, it really does have it all. One of my favorite pieces of boomerang puzzle tech would be timing on-off switch presses as a boomerang is traveling through clear pipes. Or maybe moving Mario's position so a boomerang travels a bit lower in order to hit a certain block. 
honestly, with this many possibilities for puzzles, it's hard to pick a favorite. One thing that really makes or breaks a puzzle for me though, is if it utilizes the most important aspect of the boomerang, the fact that it ricochets back and forth. Having the player throw projectiles through tubes is nothing new, but now we've got a projectile that will bounce off of objects and change directions. This can make for some really clever setups, where instead of Mario hitting an on-off switch multiple times, now it's the boomerang doing it for him. Also, I might get some backlash for this, but can we stop calling these puzzles? I don't exactly know what category they fit in, but I'm really not solving anything here. The level is just sort of playing itself. Oh gee, I wonder what I need to do next. Maybe, uh, I don't know, throw a boomerang through this tube because that's my only option. Oh wow, the path opened up. I'm such a genius. <clears throat> anyway, just... Make sure your puzzles actually have a problem and a solution, instead of just slowing the player down with mindless busywork. Of course, no new power-up is complete without the Kaizo community giving its seal of approval. And I do believe the boomerang flower certainly earned it. It's a rush to be slinging this swinging Carly's while also dashing and dodging your way through obstacles. The boomerang suit provides the means to activate blocks the player needs to stand on, or take out objects in the player's way. If you are designing a Kaizo stage, the most important thing to note is that the player is only able to have one boomerang out at a time, meaning if they throw one a little too early or a little too late, they could be stuck without one for the next few seconds, which could lead to an untimely death. Remember that unless the player manages to catch their boomerang, or if you force the boomerang to be destroyed, it'll be left to hover, change directions, or bounce around, which could make for some really awkward moments. If you design your sections around this by either forcing the boomerang to be destroyed or taking advantage of its returning nature, it'll feel a lot smoother to play. And this should go without saying, but please have clear indicators for when and where a player should be throwing their boomerang if it isn't explicitly obvious. It should also be different than your jump indicator. Using arrows to both tell the player where to throw and where to jump will just cause more confusion. But that's just the recoil of this dead memerang dandelion. If you're looking for more inspiration, check out another one of these item breakdowns. A huge thank you to my patrons and YouTube members for making this series possible, and I'll see you in the next one.